So this week, I'm going to talk to you about the power of awareness. And um, Gene and I, uh, last week, we watched a video that was done by Wim Hof on the power of br breathing, especially deep breathing. And those of you who are following me on meditation or on, the, on my Facebook Lives in the day, you've heard me talk about Wim Hof. I love his breathing technique. But today, he made something. He said, we turn everything into life. I want you to think about that statement. We turn everything into life. Now, if I personalize that, what I'm saying is I turn everything into life. So I explored that. I've been exploring that all week. And what came to me is that when I take a deep breath in, that breath I'm taking in, I'm turning into my life. When I drink water, the water I take in, I'm turning that into life in my body. The food that I take in, I take that food in and my body takes it and recreates it as parts of me. So I'm literally taking in the air, the water, and the food, and I am recreating the life that is running and living in this body temple that you're witnessing right now. And as I do this, so are you. But then I'm also taking in what I see, what I hear, what I smell, what I taste, and what I feel, and what I think, and, what, and all of that's coming in, and then I am interpreting it and creating an experience. The question came to me was this. Knowing that we turn everything into our life, how aware are we about what we're doing? That's the key thing. So I ask you this question right now, and I'm going to ask you to be really honest with yourself. How aware are you? Really? Think about that. Are you really that aware? How much of your day do you spend as the observer? Think about your day, your normal average day. What percentage of your day are you truly aware? Are you in the observer mode? Think about this. If you spend 5% of your day, it's an hour and 15 minutes. If you're aware, an hour and 15 minutes of your day, you are probably in the top 1% of all the people in the world. Think about this. If you're meditating and you're truly aware and meditating and you're doing 20 minutes and you do another 20 minutes, that's only half the time. So the question is, how can you be aware? See, here's something that's really interesting. Once we name something, and that's what we do. My granddaughter, who's two and a half, she points at things and she's naming things. And all of us have been taught how to name things, but here's the key. Once we name something, we limit our awareness. Because the name we give it is not expansive. The name we give it is limiting. But when we label an apple, we label it as this round thing. We don't see it as it's living. It has fruit. It has seeds. It has nourishment within it. There's water within it. There's all of these vitamins, nutrients within it. We don't see that because we put a name on it. All we see is a picture of an apple. But then we taste it. Do we just taste the flavor of it? Or do we even taste the flavor? Do we taste the life-giving nature of it? Something that I really noticed, when I'm eating food that is not cooked, there's a different energy that I'm taking into my body than when I'm eating cooked food. That's a matter of awareness, isn't it? You see, we've got to look at, we label something as a relationship. Okay, what does a relationship mean? Most people think a relationship is where two people depend on each other and that you're codependent. Well, no, you got the wrong label. You put the wrong word on it or you put the meaning of the word wrong. A relationship is something you share with someone where both people have perfect freedom and to be able to be authentic as themselves, 
And then in that authenticity, they support each other as they grow. And they support each other and they have fun together. You've got to be able to have fun, support, and give your partner perfect freedom to be themselves. If you are putting limitation on your partner, it's not love. See, we must learn to be aware of not only the outer, but the inner beauty as well. We forget that everything starts with a thought. Everything starts with a thought. There's always a thought before there's a creation. There had to be a thought before there was an automobile. So you may see the automobile, but you've got to always understand there's an inner reality. There's an inner focus within us as to how we see anything in life. Simple example. Do you see the glass as half full or half empty? Your inner reality tells you which way you see that. If you're an optimist, you see it as half full. If you're a pessimist, you see it as half empty. What is your inner reality focusing on life? How does your inner reality look at relationships in your life? How does your inner reality look at money in your life? How does your inner reality look at jobs within your life? Is a job just a means to get money? Or is a job way to live life where you're getting great joy, you're getting to use your creative power? You see, you create the experience you have by the inner way that you look at it, by the awareness that you have about what you're doing, when you're doing it, who you're doing with, and what is the benefit of what you're doing. That inner, inner reality and that awareness level determines all the life experience that we have. See, the question you got to look at is, do you believe... It's possible, possible to be aware 100% of the time. I've contemplated that. And in the human form, I do not believe it's possible at all. I don't know if it's possible to get to 25% awareness, to be very honest. When you really think about our lives, most of our lives, we live unaware. I don't even know how aware Jesus or the Dalai Lama, or I don't know how aware Buddha was. I have no idea. I have no idea, but I know this. I do not believe if they were in human form, they were not 100% aware. They had to see contrast, otherwise they wouldn't have experience. And you see, we're in the human body, in the human mind, and we're here to have contrast. So realize that we're never going to get to 100% level of awareness. It's not going to happen. But I believe that there are three steps that we can take that will allow us to increase our level of awareness. And I think that's the best thing we can do. I think our lives are about moving toward a higher level of awareness. And in, as we move to that level, we become more conscious creators and conscious experiencers of life. The first step, step one, always begins here. It's meditation. And the reason it's meditation is because we calm and quiet the ego. The ego takes us out of awareness. The ego wants to be right. It wants to argue. It wants to control. It wants to compete. The observer just observes. And when we quiet our mind, we quiet our ego. When we quiet our ego, we become the observer. We become aware. We become aware of both the inner reality and the outer experience. And I think that's important. That's why I believe that we should start our day every day with meditation and then do a second meditation either in the late afternoon, early evening, whichever fits your schedule. And 20 minutes each time is probably what I would recommend as the ideal. If you want to know more about meditation, Go on my YouTube channel. There's tons of guided meditations that you can do out there. Step two, do what you love. But first, you got to determine what you love. You got to figure out who you are and what you value. What is the hierarchy of your values? And once you understand the hierarchy of your values, then you're going to know what to do. You're going to do that which you love because you're going to fulfill your hierarchy of values. You're going to be living that. So when I'm doing this talk with you, I am living my highest values. I am present right now as I'm talking to you.
because I'm doing what I love. When I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone because my value is building into my relationships, I'm in the moment. I'm doing what I love. I'm there. I'm aware that I'm there. When I'm working out, when I'm cooking, though it's part of my highest values, personal health and well-being, I love to cook. I love to work out. And when I'm there, I'm aware that I'm doing that. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. Step three, and this is the one that I really think gives us the best benefit because it is the ability to consciously build habits that support our highest values. Think about this. Most everything we do, how we react, how we interact is a result of habits. Habits that we have unconsciously formed in our lives. Well, what if knowing the hierarchy of our values, knowing what our life purpose is, knowing the direction we're going to go, we consciously decide to create habits that support our highest values. And then when we've got those highest values, we may not even be aware, but we're doing the habits which is creating our life. I have a habit of spiritual practice. I have a habit of working out. I have a habit of eating certain foods. I have a habit of taking walks every day. I have a habit of who I contact and how often I contact people. You see, I want to make sure that I'm using my time toward that which I value the most. And it takes time to build these habits. But once you build these habits, my God, they're life-changing. Think about this. I think back, back when I was 33 years old and I was walking outside in Tampa, Florida. I had my son Stephen, nine months old, in my arm 37 years ago. I'm sorry. The kid got old fast. I got the kid in my arm. I'm smoking a cigarette. I said, wait a second. I don't want my son to smoke. And I threw the cigarette away. And I was smart enough to realize that if I didn't replace that habit with another, I wouldn't quit. So at that time, I replaced it with running. And so running became the new habit. Running fed the idea that it was contrary to smoking. I, I could breathe better by, by running. I couldn't breathe as well when I was smoking. I also could feel the difference. And then every time I looked at my son's face, I realized I'm giving an example. I'm a runner. I'm not a smoker. Now, I did that for him, but in reality, I was really doing it for me. I asked the question, what habits do you have right now that are not serving you? Because habits, you could almost say, are addictions, aren't they? Are you using social media in a positive way? I realize that everyone's got a bit of a social media addiction. I do. But I do know that for the most part, most of what I'm putting out on social media is about people thinking for themselves. I put out my daily thought. I put out a daily, I do a daily Facebook, YouTube live about my thought for the day. I put out videos like this. I teach classes online. I'm putting things out there for one reason only, to get people to question. Because it's through question that we get clarity. It's through clarity that we can take steps and move forward. I think that's so important that we understand that until we get clear, nothing changes. You see, no matter what we do, there will always be contrast. And if we're aware, we can be a better master of our experience. But if we're not aware, we will always remain victims. You see, in awareness, something can happen to us. And then we can shift our consciousness by going into meditation, by doing something and focusing on what we love, or building a new habit where the experience that we don't desire won't happen again. But remember this, through all of this, life is a journey and we're constantly going to be making adjustments. So don't think you're going to get to the end. You're not. So enjoy the moment. That's the key thing. Whatever that moment is, be in it and enjoy it fully. And remember your level of awareness that you are not that body. You are not that mind but you're the observer getting to observe life makes it all such a more beautiful sight. I want to thank you for joining us today. 
I'm so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask that you go to our website, agapecsl.com. Once there, click on the Donate button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. Or if you would like, text your gift by simply dialing 972-532-6976. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to you in the world. I would ask that if you like this message, to please subscribe to my YouTube channel under my name, Lee Wallach. Again, I want to thank you for joining me in the Gopi community as we learn how to better self-love through conscious living.